pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Everybody. Summer's officially here, I think. Thermometer anyway. Okay, let's uh, do the approval of the minutes of the May the 2nd, 2017 regular meeting, please. So Second. Second. Second by Rowdy. Is that them all yet? Yes. Okay. Uh, no one has signed in in the public comment section, I don't believe. So we'll move to reports. And Mr. Miller. Exciting things that are going on. Uh, first one's uh, our LC auto. Uh, <clears throat> each one of our classes now have to have a uh, specific name or company name. So our automotive class that Mr. Green teaches LC auto. Um, we had the uh, this year with our passing rate, um, students have to take their ASC certification. Um, they were working on finishing that up yesterday. Um, our passing rate is 81 percent, um, and that's for the uh, uh, for the basic four core areas of that test. Um, 81 percent is probably about the highest we've been, um, so that's a, that's been a plus for us. Um, Aaron Hutchison is going to go to uh, Louisville, Kentucky in June, and he's going to represent the Skills USA Nationals in mobile electronics installation. Um, Dustin Willer. He's a, a senior. He's attending college at UTI. He's, he's our first auto student to ever go there. Uh, they, they come out and try to recruit from, from time to, to time. And, uh, we've never had anybody that really applied, so he, he was our, he's our first candidate for that. And the exciting thing about it is we have a 100% completion rate in auto class this year. So everybody that was accepted as a junior, uh, nobody left or moved, so we went through. Um, and everybody has completed the, the, the four core areas for that. Um, so that's, that's, that's kind of exciting. Our, uh, our Army JOTC, um, they competed in the uh, Brigade Best, the Best Raider competition in April in Hickory, North Carolina. And on a positive note, we have been, we've been selected to host the State Raider competition for the State CTE Department. And uh, that'll be next year, in the spring of next year. Our LC Farm, our Ag Program, Greenhouse has quite a bit of stuff in it. Uh, there are everything from flowers to a variety of plants, um, some ferns, those are uh, being sold. Uh, something new I've added that, that'll be um, for the fall is we're adding a new concentration. Um, it's going to be agribusiness, so now the kids that take classes with the Ag Program, they can go through and be certified in the plant system, the animal system, and now agribusiness. So that'll, that'll give them the opportunity to be three completers for that one program. Uh, so I'm hoping that'll generate um, more completers for us. Um, our hyponic system and generator's been installed and up and running. We have about four feet tall tomato plants. Um, they've got tomatoes on them, about the big round. So uh, they're up and running. We have a lot of those um, to be sold uh, as soon as they can be harvested. So we're kind of looking forward to that. I didn't realize they grew as fast as they did with that system. But uh, it's, it's unique to go see them one day and they're six inches tall in the bucket and go back two days later and they're already, you know, crippled in size. 
So that's pretty cool. Um, we have Austin Gilkerson, one of our seniors. He's earned a state degree. Uh, this is the first uh, person we've had to do that since 09. Uh, state convention's coming up in July, and we have uh, four students that are showing market hogs during the summer. In our property class, I found out that uh, for LC Carpentry, uh, we were able to add a couple other uh, certifications for students that went through the program this year. Um, had a gentleman came, that came down from um, uh, West Virginia uh, electrician and offered to give us a test. He gave us a discount on it. Um, so the students uh, have some, a basic apprenticeship test for um, electrician, and, and that went over really well. We did a scissor lift, and uh, the new one was the hazmat communications training. Uh, we have <coughs> members of the Tri-State Building Trades um, group coming to meet with uh, our completers on Thursday. Um, that's part of our uh, advisory council meeting. Uh, folks that come in and meet with, or the advisory board it is, that will come in and meet with the, uh, the students at the end of the year. Hopefully this will lead to a few uh, opportunities for some jobs for students. Um, all, for all of the students through the program have their OSHA 1926 uh, 10 hour um, certification and they'll get that on uh, Thursday. And then something I found out today was that we have two of our students uh, that have been accepted to the construction management program at Bridge Valley, and we've not had any folks go up that direction. Um, so that's kind of a, a first for us. Actually, they had went on a field trip up there, and earlier in the year showed some uh, some interest, and uh, the college actually called and wanted the, the boys to come up. So they're actually going up tomorrow, um, I guess, to finish doing the paperwork and enroll. So uh, we're, we're excited for that. Our Pantherway Healthcare, uh, that's our, that's Ms. Uh, Elkins' plan. Uh, something new I added this year was that uh, you could do a, uh, an OSHA 10 standard, so we can offer OSHA 10 training for uh, business um, folks. We've not done that before. Um, we have the National Safety Council uh, blood warm packages, first aid and CPR, a couple things that we added. We also earned $2,500 of uh, scholarships this year, and we have 30 of our students that received the Red Cross Leadership Honors Cords um, for donating uh, blood and, and participating. Um, our Hosea State Competition, we have four folks that took place there. Uh, Jessica Johnson is the, uh, the first one that's listed there for behavioral medicine. She is actually going to Florida in, uh, I believe it's in June. Uh, to represent Lincoln County High School at the HOSA competition for, um, for our, nursing, our nursing program. So that's, uh, that's exciting. Um, continuing on with our ECE programs, our uh, Crowling Panther Preschool, uh, they have their EC CAT certification. So now they have the ability to co-teach in a, a pre-K and kindergarten uh, class in the state of West Virginia. Um, they're also in that program where they completed two years with us, they can complete one year with Southern, and they can have their associate degree. Um, and then they went on a field trip earlier in the year to uh, West Virginia uh, University, and they checked out their child development center, and they just finished up on their capstone presentation. Our welding class, it's a uh, straight A welding and fabrication. First time we've had 100% welding certification for our seniors. Um, we've not had everybody to get certified with our welding certification before, um, so this is a first. And I feel pretty good about that. It's a real good group of kids that, uh, that he had to work with and uh, a little bit of drive about them, so they set forth and uh, end up doing what they set out to, to do there. Um, they took a field trip to F.L. Smith, and the, uh, the nice thing out of that field trip was that uh, four of the boys were offered jobs, so they would go back after school. Um, hopefully these folks will come over Thursday and meet with the kids. So after, after they graduate, uh, they, uh, they want four of the top students to come up and see them. 
and uh, they've offered them a position with them. So that's pretty good. It's, uh, they've been working on various projects and they, they're finishing up their capstone presentation. Panther Publishing, they uh, made our curriculum guide, and I'm going to share those with you here in a moment. Uh, we had 13 students that completed the Microsoft Office uh, Word certification. That's the most we ever had. I think the most we've had before in the past has been like six, five, six for the year. Uh, Ms. Frazier has done a wonderful job with the, uh, with the students, and uh, as a result, we have 13 students that uh, have certifications now through that. And she's hopefully going to continue with some of them next year um, to add additional certifications to that. They've been working on business cards. They did the talent spring formal tickets, uh, food drive flyers, regarding the graduation programs, the parking and the entry tickets. And uh, she just finished up yesterday with the capstone portions for her seniors. Um, hopefully we're going to have um, 18 completers of this program uh, for the year. I think that's the most we've had. So it's, it's basically trying to streamline things and track kids and make sure they're scheduled correctly uh, to get the number of completers that, uh, that I'm aiming for. Uh, our robotics fix uh, had a lot of uh, success this year. Multiple different uh, championships that they, you know, that they, they held. Um, different tournaments, service awards, Tournament of Champion Design Award at Marshall, the Excellent Skills and Tournament Championship, West Virginia State Bex. Um, they did the tournament champs at Bridge Valley. Uh, they did the big sign on the billboards in the county. Uh, so they've had, a, they've had a pretty good year. Uh, next page is just some, some data that I've pulled. Um, this was the, the, the year in 2014 and 15. That was the year prior to, to that I took over with um, as our CTE supervisor, and uh, fully implementing simulated workplace was in 2015 and 16. And I looked at the, our, our attendance and I looked at our discipline. Um, in the 2014 and 15, if you looked at our, our attendance was 86.2. We had 2,387 referrals throughout the the, the, the Lincoln County High School. Um, implementing the simulated workplace, our attendance came up a little bit, but not much. But our discipline dropped to 1,549 last year. Um, this year, uh, when I pulled it a few days back, we were at, uh, for the 2016-17 year, 89, almost 90% on attendance. Our discipline was at 1,021 discipline referrals for the year. Uh, one thing I try to instill with them kids is that, uh, and, and I meet with them regularly and talk with them, is that you know they work as a company, so whatever behavior they have down there, that's what needs to be exhibited and throughout the whole school, or you know, your trips and, and so on. Uh, now I see a good thing if I do walkthroughs and I go in in the classroom and you got a kid that's making a little noise or acting that, if they're in there with some of the other uh, folks that are in their company, somebody usually says something to them. So they're kind of policing their own their group, and, and I think that has really helped um, with lowering our discipline referrals um, quite a bit. Matt, let me ask you something. Um, in looking at this, I know with implementation of the uh, random drug testing, mm -hmm. and some of the other qualifications to be in the simulated workplace, have those things had a negative effect on the number of students that are participating from year to year? No. So this is, I mean, the, the only way to look at this is in a positive light. Yes. The programs have positive impact. You've gotten the number of discipline events down, and you've gotten attendance up. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That's that's, that's the way to look at it. Um, on the follow-up page, I have our uh, random drug testing results for the year. Um, we tested um, 310 students that were CTE drivers and our athletes. Um, we had four positive results. Out of that four. They've been retested uh, at least one or, or two other times since then. We've had no repeaters. Uh, our, our pass rate's roughly about 98%. Uh, it's actually above the state from what uh, from the numbers that I've looked at. So we're, we're um, doing much better than a lot of other places, to say. Um, 
the drug testing has been a positive thing. So the kids know, they know what's expected. Um, I, and I, like I said, you know, I talk with them regularly. I talk to them at the beginning of the year that you know this is all uh, uh, what's going to happen within the programs. And uh, I think it, it's it's been a definitely a positive influence. I, I believe on the, on the students. <coughs> Um, we've had uh, either inspections or visits this year. We had two inspections from Justin Hensley. He's with the CDE. He's with Dr. Dan Tony's office. Um, we've had Marty Hudak, um, two visits from him. He came back in December and then he came a couple weeks ago. Um, he's with CTE. He works with Dr. Dan Tony. And he's uh, more or less like, I guess, a consultant with, with Risa, too. Um, for CTE programs, um, he's came. We've looked and talked, and we walked around. And he, he's been impressed with what's going on at the high school. Um, we had a civil rights um, audit this year from West Virginia Department of Ed. Uh, Dan Blackwood has actually came back a couple times to uh, just kind of check and, and make sure that uh, uh, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. And as a result of, of all of our visits and inspections. Everything's been positive. So I, I feel pretty good about that. Uh, our future plans. Uh, one thing I want to do, because we have so many kids that, that, that get out and go to different events and things, is I, I purchased an ID badge uh, maker. So all of our CTE students will have a, an ID badge. It'll, it'll be like Lincoln County High School, Career and Technical Ed. It'll be, we'll be able to put their picture on it and what program they're with. So if they go on a field trip or anything, they'll automatically have um, an ID tag. And in most companies or businesses um, look for that. So we're kind of jumping on board and following um, that. Uh, the kids seem to be excited about it. I generally try to ask them uh, some questions about what they'd like to see improve, um, what we can you know, tweak things here or there. So I, I take their input pretty serious. Um, we're adding a new CTE practice for simulated workplace, and I'm hoping this is going to help us with our attendance behavior grades um, for our students. I've noticed that a lot of our students are, uh, are failing classes, and actually, when I go out talk and I meet with the students of these companies, they, they brought to my attention. They're like, well, Mr. Miller, I'm in with so-and-so. He's missed 30 days of school. He's our foreman. He's also failing two classes. I'm here every day. I haven't had that opportunity yet. You know, why most successful companies do not have somebody misses 30 days of school and, and so forth. And I was like, okay. So um, one thing we're going to do uh, next year is uh, we're going to put it to because each company has the opportunity to change and add things. Is put into a company manual a policy for to hold leadership position. So it'll be like you have to have a 3.5. You have to be passing all of your um, core classes plus your CTE classes um, and no discipline referrals would be an example. That would be your level four which would be like your supervisors and so forth. And then another one. So the students are going to help me make this um, and I'm hoping that uh, it's going to be a good thing uh, you know, later on. So I kind of take their advice and see what we need to change and, and change it. Because when I listen to them and we do other things it's been, it's been going smoothly. Um, we're actually a little bit ahead, I think, of some other places with it. Because I mentioned this to, uh, to Marty Hudak, who was visiting there a couple weeks ago. Uh, and another practice that I put in place with Simulated Workplace that's not required um, is that I have the, uh, the students go around and do um, like a, a weekly or monthly observation, whatever they can get in. And so we try to do that on at least a four week time. For example, the kids in JRT. So the ROTC program will go down and see Long Public Safety, just do a quick walkthrough. So they're looking to see do they have a 5S poster, uh, are they following the safety procedures, um, you know, did they get meted at, at the door and greeted and stuff like that. Uh, so it's kind of letting them place them on sale. Uh, it's, it's like the teachers doing a walkthrough, or the principal's going in and doing a walkthrough on the teachers, and you're looking for things. Uh, so we, we did a few of those uh, this spring, and uh, it's, been a, it's been positive. So, uh, and I shared that with him, and he's like, well, that's, that's beyond what we're asking of you for simulated workplace. 
And I told him, I said, yeah, I know. But I said, I think it'll help us because not every place is the same. Uh, continuing down the list there, uh, we've got the generator in play. Electrics went off, it came on like it's supposed to. Uh, it ran the, uh, the hyponic system, continued with it, and the refrigerator that we had uh, hooked up uh, to it. What time our electrics been off, so uh, I think we're, we're okay to go ahead and start the fish in the fall. Run the fish tanks and run the hyponic system, mm -hmm. what else you said? Yeah, refrigerator. refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Lights or anything like that? Uh, we didn't hook them up to, on the light system, um, but uh, the one we put in, you know, it was, it was $14,000 roughly for the whole thing. Um, but it's hooked up to, to three different things, the, the tanks, the refrigerator, and, and, uh, and the greenhouse. So uh, when BA gets dollars, he said, you're pretty much at your max. We, we can't, you won't be able to add anything else to it. But those are the three main things that we're looking at uh, to keep on if electric goes off again. Um, the next thing on the list is um, we do this 10th grade rotation and uh, I looked at it last year and uh, it wasn't really doing a whole lot for me and then this year uh, it, uh, it wasn't even doing much. It's more or less like a waste of time to me uh, because a lot of kids are not taking interest in that program. So what I'm looking at doing is abolishing the rotation for the 10th grade and switch into a, uh, an elective classes for the semester. If, if we do that, then we'll be able to open it up to the ninth grade students so we can have the ninth and the tenth grade being able to take elective classes. And what I've, one of the reasons why I was looking at this is that when I went into, for example, uh, you know, Miss Elkins with, with the nursing students, and she's sitting in there with five guys and she has to spend the six weeks with them. And I was like, are you guys interested in what's going on? I would not be here. So now she's got six weeks to sit and deal with them if there's behavior issues and so forth that can come about that because they're bored to death and out of their mind. So one of the things I looked at was, okay, if we come up with some semester classes these kids could be interested in, then they could spend a semester in carpentry and maybe they're also interested in welding. So then we would look at spending a semester in carpentry, then the following semester do welding. And then um, the next, school year, or maybe it's a 10th grader, depending on how the schedule works, they could get into two other classes if they wanted to and, and to look at it. Um, and then I brought a copy of the of our curriculum guide to share with you uh, some of the thoughts that I had here with it and what we put in here that we can do. The yellow marker or the yellow sticker tape there. If you flip over um, to that page, it gives you a little description of uh, some of the classes that we're looking at. For example, uh, if you look down on the page, you'll see automotive maintenance. That'll be a semester class. And here's a description. And what we can do is we listed these cl classes still as career um, classes with the numbers. However, we're going to do more in there than just uh, spend a little bit of time and touching on some basic things. Um, here's a basic description of it. Um, building constructions and basics are there. Um, one of the things that when you read through that, if you take one or two and look at it, you'll see that uh, we're going to be putting an emphasis on um, career exploration, job seeking skills, uh, personal, professional ethics. And then the main thing I want to work on is as part of this course, students will work on the trades math, the technical reading, the science related skills, and learn about the simulated workplace. Um, I think if we take put this into place, I think this is going to help our students because now they're going to be exposed to more math and writing um, and it'll basically be just be a big period for them to do that. Um, those are, are, are two classes for that. If you turn on the next page, we're going to add a personal finance class, human development, introduction to health care, 
And then if you turn the page again, one of the ones that I really like, well actually there's two on here on the next page that I really uh, I'm looking forward to. We're going to, we're able to do a sales and marketing class. We're also able to offer STEM, which is our science, technology, and engineering math, um, listed as a, as a career. Uh, this will be make basically a project-based learning uh, class. Students go in, they'll work on projects like bridge building, for example, or catapults. Then you're going to bring in the math components of it. Um, and go from there, and then you know, using the technology and, and the science part of it, it all kind of builds up one or the other. Um, the other one is because we've had a lot of success with our uh, robotics program, and I checked with the uh, state department uh, just to take one of Mr. Harshberger's periods of the day and give him a VEX robotics class. And basically, what we're using is we're using the standards for the state robotics program we had to do the, the four classes so we're going to take out pieces of it to do the um, like the first year and the second year with these kids um, and they, that way they can work on a variety of things during that period of the day um, related to it. it's not taking them out of other classes coming in or having to spend a lot of extra time in the evenings or the weekends uh, but I think that'll be excited and that'll be basically permission for the class but I like the STEM class where they'll be doing the different projects and thing in, and it, it's open to uh, you know ninth and tenth grade. Even if we have eleventh or twelfth grade student that needs a class that may be interested in it, uh, I'll be able to apply for it. So I'm hoping that uh, these things will help us with uh, with writing and math and things that we need that we need to work on, and it, and it gives the CTE an opportunity to to jump in and uh, tie in what's going on with the. Uh, in the core areas with what we're doing down there and trying to make a connection. All right, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. um, presently, are the students in like a given class all year long or do they change by semester? They, uh, well, in the rotation class that we have, they, they change like every four and a half weeks. So that's they, what I'm trying to understand. It. So when you're saying they would be able to change, uh, isn't necessary at the end of the semester, but mid-semester or something? It'll be one semester, so they'll start in August and go till like uh, we end of December or January, and then they would pick up another class. What are they after. doing right before you implement this? Are they not doing that? Are they staying in that same class all year and not long? No, we're just doing a rotation class where they spend about about four weeks, and then they rotate to another class. So. You, you travel with the same group of kids, and they may start off and do automotive for you know like four weeks, and then they'll go to carpentry four weeks, and then continue on to the other program. So they end up with a credit at the end of the year. Yes, they'll end up with another credit. Right. Um, well, I mean, even in the current format. Yeah, so yeah, it still works out. It still works out the same. They still trying to see the difference in the two. Yeah, you, you'll get a pick here. Uh, the way the system currently operates, you rate, rotate for four to six weeks through every CTE every program, CTE whether program. you like it or not. So if you're right. a boy that has an interest in automotive as a freshman or as a sophomore now, yeah. right, yeah. you have to still rotate, say, through nursing. Under the program you're going to implement, they get to choose yes. a class or two classes yes. per year to go through, and they don't have to rotate through ones they don't want to they right. have any interest in. Right, and by adding all these additional classes, uh, it gives them an opportunity <coughs> to, if they're interested in automotive, they can excel in automotive. And this will give them an opportunity to say, okay, I, I've spent a semester in there. This is what I want to do. So then when it is 11th or 12th grade, then they could. Uh, is the only difference then they're still changing every four and a half weeks, but now they get to have more input into what they change to? No, that's that semester. Next year it will be a full half. Yeah, half a year. They'll take one class for a semester. Yes. This year they'd have, what, five, six classes over the course of a year? Uh, eight. Eight classes over the course of a year. Next year they'd have only have two per yeah. year. Right. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to see if it's okay. Okay. Yeah. One thing is, is it's like, you know, I mentioned before, you, you go in and you've got uh, this group of kids that, you know, he may have ten that's in automotive. Only three have expressed an interest in it. The others are just sitting there bored to death. And it's kind of hard to, to get involved and do a lot of stuff in, in, in detail because then you get maybe some behavior issues you have to talk to them about. 
uh, are not going to get in anything because you don't have that much interest in it. And this way, this will be the kids that definitely want to be in a program, so they're like, automotive is probably my thing, so I'm going to go in there. Now, on the, on the good side of this, down the road, is one thing that I've run into is that the kids go through that rotation, they don't get to spend much time in there. The downfall of that is, is when they become a junior and they enroll in the class, for example, construction. So building construction, they enroll it. Well, after about the first six weeks, they're like, I don't think that's for me. Well, now they can't change because uh, of how the system is set up. So they have got to either continue in that program or we find a better <coughs> pathway um, and then it knocks them out of the other classes that they wanted to go into. Well, I'm, I, I like that because I've always <coughs> thought that students need to have in advance more input into what classes we're going to offer mm -hmm. so that we know what to offer yeah. rather than saying these are the, what we have. Now you, and one thing I did, I'll just stand out in the hallways a lot of time and talk and meet and greet with the kids that's come down the hall and I was like, hey, if you, you know, what's something you want to learn about, you know, working on your house? And they're like, well, you know, got a lake, lakey waterfall, so how can I, you know, how do you fix that? So I just started taking in input, you know, like asking some of the, the girls coming down the hall, you know what Jack said in an automobile? You know how to use one? No. So I started, that, that's got me thinking about, you know, maybe we can learn <coughs> some just traditional basic skills that these kids know how to, to do, you know, basic home improvement or how to change a light bulb in the, uh, you know, in the, in the house because you've got different ones. Or if you're trying to change a bulb in a car, uh, you know, what do you need to do to, to do that? Or, you know, how to identify the different parts of the engine and, and then bring in related, you know, math into that. And, and then there's a writing piece of it. Um, so I, I was looking at, at, at doing all of that and hopefully that will lead you know, the kids into taking more interest in the class. Plus, I think if they take more interest into the class, they're going to be more successful later on. Less of a physical problem. Yeah, on one side. Uh, plus, they're actually be able to see now more so than before is the math that they're learning in the academic side when they come in, how that's actually applied. So now these guys can spend more time with them. So as they decide, you know, as a, as a junior that they want to take you know, whether it be welding, automotive, or you know, as a two-year program to finish up, they already see that connection of what's going on. So maybe that's going to improve their grades and so forth. You know, see, and academic. Yeah, that's my overall goal of, of setting and looking at, at this. And Matt, as, as we discussed the other day, at some point between now and before the beginning of the new school year, the board will have to officially approve these electives as okay. well as associated standards and objectives. I have those. In order for the students to get the credit. So I'll get those to you. We want to try to do that as quickly as we can. Okay. Yeah, that's what I want to run by you, you know. Um, this is a great idea. That's the, the direction. And that was something I brought up when we had our uh, couple of our walkthroughs or visits from our, our CTE folks, and they're like, well, other places are not doing that. You know, why are you doing it? So I explained to them, and they're like, can we take these ideas back to Dr. Dantani? I was like, yeah, sure, just make, make sure you mention my name and, and Lake County. <laughs> Say that out there three or four times, you can talk to them all you want. Yeah, so. Um, then the other thing is listed on there for a future plan. Uh, as I mentioned, we added the, the STEM class, and it's basically going to be a project-based class. Uh, one thing we started is uh, through our ag program, we're doing food boxes, and you can sign up for that. Uh, currently, we have 10 staff members that do that. Um, you'll get things that come out of the, uh, you'll get a dozen eggs, some stuff to make a salad with. Um, you can end up with some jam or honey uh, as an extra treat in it. Um, everything is uh, either out of the, the greenhouse or the high tunnels um, that go into this box. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, positive feedback from that, so I think that that'll continue to, to grow. Yeah, it actually makes a pretty good salad. I'm more interested in the chickens. Myself. The chickens. Uh, and continuing there on the on the following page, we did um, talk to uh, uh, Angie Pritchard about trying to provide some uh, salad mix to the cafeteria. Uh, we're working out some details with, with that. Uh, those will be things like lettuce and tomato and radishes. Um, hopefully we're looking to do that in the fall. Uh, we've got, we're going to have tons of tomatoes and somebody's going to have to eat them if we don't sell them. So um, 
I think it'll be uh, it'll be good. And I think the kids will the kids are kind of excited about it as well because now they're going to, they're seeing that we're growing it. Now we're going to eat it. Um, so they've actually seen it start from the seed to the plate. As, uh, um, and then we did the the butchering of the chickens uh, today. That was something new that uh, that'll be coming. And then uh, we're going to work on. Um, raising another batch of, uh, of chickens and uh, these are your uh, what's called your frying chickens and uh, we had we, we started off with a hundred we had 98 to survive to grow uh, 60 of them were cut up today and uh, 50 of them went to the hospital uh, 10 of them is going to go on a cooker uh, Thursday at the high school and we're going to eat them at one o'clock if everything works out so if you if you're free and over that way, stop in. We'll gladly feed you. We're having some barbecue, chicken, and uh, I think some hamburgers and some hot dogs. Uh, and the kids the kids are like, really, we're going to eat that? And I said, yeah, I believe we are. So, <laughs> I said, you know. So we've got uh, 20 currently uh, currently right now we have 25 CTE centers or high schools that uh, that, that do this. Um, there, mainly, there's really none in our area. All of them are up in the uh, either the, I guess the Eastern Panhandle. There, there's a ton of uh, stuff going on up there. Um, I talked to uh, on if you flip the page there. I got an email. I talked with uh, Jason Hughes, and he just sent a uh, just just a brief message to to share um, with everyone about the. Uh, the, the, the animal processing part of it. So they were, they're, they're tickled that we're kind of trading a new, uh, we're just trading on new water. Um, doing some things. And then we had Mr. Jordan, who has done a tremendous job with us. Um, he's been our sort of intervention teacher um, this year since uh, he was doing the BD and they got moved out um, when Mr. Campbell came. Um, we've been able to utilize him quite a bit with CTE. He does a lot of one-on-one -on -one with the students. Um, he's helped them with their portfolios, their capstone projects, um, with tests, uh, you name it, he, he's done it uh, to try to help as many of these kids that, uh, that he can. It's been a, a basic relief for uh, some of the staff to have that extra set of, uh, set of hands and eyes um, in a classroom. He's done quite a bit with the students on the WIND program, which is part of that they have to complete that as seniors. Before they graduate, is one of the state requirements. Uh, I'm working on trying to figure out how to, uh, how we can maybe keep a position like that for the, um, for the following year. Uh, I have to talk with uh, uh, some folks at the CD, CTE department and find out what their budget's like, and, uh, and 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 go from there. If we can use some CTE money. Um, <coughs> We might be able to, to look at that and I've talked with uh, Dr. Lowe and uh, she said she's kind of looking into it with me as well um, and seeing if we can figure out to try to do something maybe down the road because we find that this has been successful. Uh, if it's something we uh, we don't get an opportunity to do this coming year, um, it's something I'll continue to work on with uh, uh, putting it in the, uh, the LEA plan or something to try to get some help there. Did continuing on, um, Mr. Neal, um, we're working on, we'd like to, uh, we'll, we applied for uh, some grants, so we're going to see how that works out. Uh, if we get that, then we may look at, the, at building a small uh, ag shop um, over there behind the, uh, the greenhouses um, later on. Um, I think we can, we can be able to offer maybe a, a class or two, because ag mechanics is really big. It has been for, for, for several years. Um, that seems to be one of his 
uh, Brock's posse likes to do. Um, so if something works out for us, then we may look to try to uh, build a little shop area right there beside the school where it would be easy for the kids to go in and out to the, uh, you know, if they need a restroom or something other, and, and be near his classroom as well. Uh, and then on the, uh, the last thing there is our Pantherway Healthcare. Um, we met with the Lincoln Nursing and Re Rehab, um, Lincoln Primary Care, Southern West Virginia. We actually went to a, a, a meeting at Logan with the community college. And we're looking to increase some certification opportunities for next year uh, for our students in the nursing program. Um, one of the things we, uh, that they talked about is um, maybe try to find some clinical areas that, that they could help us with. Um, for our students to, uh, to get some additional clinical hours. Um, the Lincoln Nursing and Rehab, um, they're, I guess, um, I've met with Matt Tucker, and uh, he's going to meet with, uh, I guess, some representatives from his agency or that own the, the nursing home facility about uh, allowing our students to come up and do more than what they do now. Uh, they only get to come a couple you know, times a year, whatever, like the holidays and stuff, there'd be more uh, traditional coming in and, and helping out and doing things that, that sort of tie back in more sort of what's going on in the classroom and, and uh, some of their needs. So I'm hoping that'll, uh, that'll work out uh, down the road. We've also explored the idea of uh, Cabin Huntington Hospital as being an opportunity for the kids to maybe uh, travel uh, maybe a couple days a month or something. There, I've got to wait on those guys to get back with us. But that's uh, something we may be able to look at down the road for, uh, for next year. Okay. I think it brings us to the end. Oh, the, uh, the, the chicken killer machine there on the last page. Yeah, that's the process. The chicken plucker. That's the process. Yeah. Hang the chickens on. Just give you a general idea of, uh, of uh, what it is over there. There's a picture there. The trailer on today, did it? Yeah. When I first saw it, I thought, hey, it's a good our chiller over at the hospital. It's about to panic. Oh, because of the refrigerator out back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, they brought in a, a refrigerator. Um, refresh was actually working on um, being able to buy one so we could either keep it on site or, or move it around and utilize it as. Uh, as they did. I drove by there today and I saw you out there uh, across the road and under that area there. You might have been butchering. I'm glad I didn't stop. Oh, you. no, no, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I would have sped up a little bit faster. Yeah. That's what they asked me the other day. They said, you want to come out and participate? I said, no. I said, I can't handle blood. I said, I thought about you know, years ago going to school to be a doctor. I said, but it wouldn't help. Because I'd be trying to help the patient and they'd be help, trying to help me up off the floor because I can't stand blood. Who did it? Uh, Who did it? Uh, with the chickens? Yeah. Uh, Refresh, have, uh, they, they had some folks um, with the West Virginia Extension Office came in and helped them. A uh, lady from WDU uh, showed them how to, the, the process of how to uh, kill the chickens humanely and, and butcher them. And, uh, yeah. Now you can't do that. Because they say if you, if you do that, then you contaminate the meat. By regular day. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, so, hey, hey, that was just what they said, and I thought, you know, as, as a kid growing up years ago, I didn't mean a chicken had done that way, and I said, I'm still alive to tell about it. Still tastes good, didn't it? Still tastes good. Just, do you have any questions? Anything I can. Did I have any thoughts here for? Yeah. I think we all agree about that. We've seen a lot of progress in the last couple of years. Our program offerings are expanded. Obviously, our students are doing much better. And, uh, and the more they can be doing things that not help them and, and uh, enhance our overall curriculum, that's great. Okay. Well, one question I do have is you didn't have anywhere mentioned in here our law and public safety program. How's that doing? It's, it's, it's doing good. Um, he's had uh, some folks come in and visit. Um, they did activities uh, on blood splatter. Um, they did it, uh, uh, an activity. He was going to send me some pictures to share with you, but I didn't get them. Um, unless they maybe went to uh, junk mail or something about it. 
but uh, they did a couple activities uh, with the blood splatter and uh, figured out, you know, standing here and, and how it hit on the wall and, and they measured and figured out angles, did some geometry with that. So that was pretty cool to see. Uh, they took that from the classroom to the road out back, uh, did a bag with the, uh, with the blood in it, set it, drove a car over it, which sent it forward and then they discussed, you know, why that happened and, uh, and broke it down and then they were, they were out there measuring and, uh, and doing some things. That's, that's been pretty good. We're working on our simulator for that. We did a modernization grant. Um, I'm hoping that's, uh, we're going to get that. About twenty thousand dollars for that simulator. Uh, if we get that and get it installed, then we'll be able to offer some stuff to the to the local police officers if they want to come in and do training and, and things. That we can actually charge them to to come and use that. Uh, like I said, it's about twenty thousand dollars. You get about six hundred different scenarios. Um, it's it's very interactive. I went down to, uh, to Cabell County and checked theirs out. Uh, they let me play with it for a minute, uh, so I thought it was pretty cool. And uh, I thought that's something we need. Uh, we're adding telecommunications next year too um, to his schedule and what that'll do is uh, kids will go through that program that'll give them an opportunity to get a, a certification for dispatch it's, it's a year-long class i think the reason they didn't send you this plug sample because of what you just said yeah <laughs> yeah well that could have been that could have been all right thank you man oh you're welcome Okay, thank you very much. Uh huh. Okay. Good update. And kind of uh, optimistic and pleasant one. Okay, let's go to the administrative section. Do you have a motion? I'll move. Carol? I'll start saying referee. All right, item A school volunteers who on occasion may also serve as bus chaperones for athletic events, academic competitions, or school outings, and have completed volunteer orientation. <coughs> Item B, five additional employment days for the following music band instructors to conduct a mini band camp in preparation for the 4th of July parade. As you know, this is an activity that uh, we implemented probably four, maybe five years ago. It's been quite successful with our middle school kids coming over to the high school and working with the high school music uh, band teachers as well as uh, our, our middle school band instructors. It's, it's helped grow a band program uh, over there the past few years. And, uh, and we sent out an invitation. You'll notice that all the middle schools are involved. Um, Hearts uh, was also, also offered an opportunity to participate in the uh, decline. But uh, those, I think it's the June of 27, I believe is what Mrs. Cook told us, when they would uh, first bring the kids over. And, uh, they, they feed them and everything while they're over there. It's, it coincides with our uh, summer feeding program. So it works out really nicely for us. Kids are looking forward to it. The teachers are as well. Item C is an agreement with Robert Moore to provide transportation services for a Hamlin PK-8 student according to the terms of the agreement, which is attached and uh, paid for through county funds. Item D is an agreement with Susan Mullane provide professional hands-on development for administrators, teachers, and community members July 31st through August 4, 2017, according to the terms of the agreement, which is attached, and this activity is being paid for through school improvement grant funds as well as special education funds. Uh, as you may recall, uh, Dr. Lowe provided the board with an update about um, Susan Mullane and the work that she does with educators regarding drug and danger traumatized children. And um, this, this is just a continuation of the training that was provided a few weeks ago in concert with uh, the work that she was doing in Cabell County. We were able to get her here at a reduced cost. So when she comes back, she'll be working with our administrators, our, our PK2 uh, teachers, as well as our middle and high school teachers. And I believe the last day she'll be here, she'll be working with local community officials, including some law enforcement folks, uh, dealing with uh, some of the situations that you wear in our area with the drug epidemic and the children that are caught up in what happens in those situations. <coughs> Item E, 
is an agreement with Chief Logan Resorts to provide lodging and accommodations for Lincoln County Administrative Professional Development Training July 30th and August 1st, 2017, according to the terms of the agreement, which is attached and this will be paid for utilizing school improvement grant funds. Now, we're actually putting the cart a little bit in front of the horse here with this uh, action tonight. Uh, next board meeting on the 30th, we plan to give the board a full-on presentation and what's involved uh, with not only this activity, but the direction that we are moving with some new found money that the State Department uh, Federal Programs Office given Lincoln County Schools. Uh, it's, it's a little over a quarter million dollars, $262,000 uh, that we can have to be given to us to implement what's referred to as the Leader in Me initiative, which is all about student leadership. And um, there's a national school out there, uh, a national charter school, it's called A.D. Combs Elementary School in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, the lady who is the principal and oversees that that school and the, their implementation of Stephen Covey's seven highly effective habits. Uh, we'll, we'll be here to talk to our administrators. It's, it's our central office administration as well as our uh, principals and assistant principals. And next year, this will be a full-on district-wide uh, implementation using this money that we've been given. So, anyway, it's just a you know just kind of a precursor to what you will hear about at the next board meeting. Give you a formal presentation. It's a great opportunity, and we'll be looking forward uh, to being able to uh, implement this program. Item F is an agreement with Stonewall Resort to provide lodging and accommodations for Duval PKA professional development, August 6th through the 8th, 2017, according to the terms of the agreement, which is attached, and it's paid for through Title I funds. Item G, an out-of-county student transfer for the 2017-2018 school year. Item H, out-of-state travel for the following employees. <coughs> Item I, to abolish the Guyon Valley Middle School special education position for multi-categorical LDBDMI K-12 effective at the conclusion of the 2016-2017 school year. Item J is approval to post Guyon Valley Middle School Special Education position for multi-categorical LDBDMI with autism, K-12, for the 2017-2018 school year. The reason that we're abolishing the current position, which is vacant, uh, and reposting in the manner that we are with, to include autism, is due to the fact that we will have three autistic children next year at Guy Valley School. And those numbers, uh, as you may be aware, uh, across the country, uh, children with autism continues to grow. And as we move forward and we post new, uh, or have the opportunity such as this one, to, uh, to post positions in special education that's multi-categorical, we will also include the autism certification. Just, just in, uh, just to, to, to uh, be in place, be able to deal with those kind of situations with the special needs of those children. Do you want anything you want to add to that? Yeah. Dr. Lowe's working with Marshall University and also with other university, trying to get uh, it's just two additional classes, trying to get a cohort where they'll come out here and teach classes, and possibly uh, there will be some tuition reimbursement. Is that going to be my question? Is if we can't fill the position as written, why do we think we can fill the position with even more? Well, the, the way it'll be posted, that it'll or willing to get the options. You know, somebody flies and has it, of course they get it. If somebody else can get it, if they're willing to get the other two, uh, two well, I took that into consideration. Take that possible. Yeah. I mean, and what I just heard Bill say was that. If this works, what they're trying to do with Marshall, there might be tuition reimbursement for people that are willing to right. take these additional two classes, and someone with an interest and that's willing to take it might might accept this job, but someone without that might have not take the job that's as opposed to that. That's correct, and, and the surrounding county grants have already started posting this way with the large population 
students with autism. You know, it you know, it used to be you know, we have seven or eight students now, you know, we have multiple students at every school with autism. It takes a special one. It'd be good if we can offer it to locally. <laughs> Okay, the last item, item K, a cooperative continuous agreement with Southwestern Community Action Council and SCAC for the Lincoln County High School Auto Tech Program to provide preventive maintenance services for vehicles owned by SCAC according to the terms of the agreement which is attached. Okay, anybody have any questions about this? <coughs> Is that an all yes vote on the administrative items? Yes. yes. All right, finance. Motion, please. So, Mr. Crowley. Second. Carol. Great. Um, scheduled invoices totaling $1,066,384.39 is attached. And as always, if you any questions, just let me know. As far as our budget situation for next year, Everything, anything. I'm working on it. It's getting okay. close. Yeah. I just didn't know with the legislature still in limbo if that was having an impact on. Well, I think there's a few that. things that's still up in limbo, but um, even the federal programs, we're not real sure. The teacher raises is still out there. There's a lot of So you're just doing what you are absolutely certain of. It. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, just following directions from the Department of Ed. You, know, you can't budget for what you don't know. So we're, uh, I think, on the, the federal programs, we had that conversation. I got an email from Amy Willard. Title I was cut, they estimate 10%. Title II cut 30%. Uh, the rural low income, which I think is Title V, was supposed to stay the same. Matt had told me that his programs were supposed to stay close to the same from what he knows. Um, so I put those revenue numbers in, got to match my expenses. I'm about probably 90% done with, with, with that, so we'll have it in two weeks for sure. Okay. Right or wrong, we're going to have it. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully it's right. Well, I, yeah, it's, right. It be a it's been a learning experience. Let's put it that way. And we'll adapt to whatever may happen in Charleston. Okay. Is that an all yes on the finance? Yes. All yes. Okay. Personnel to have a motion. So moved. Larry. Second. Uh, Fred. Okay. Item A, employment of professional personnel. Item B, transfer of professional personnel. Item C, employment of substitute service personnel. Item D, transfer of service personnel. Item E, employment of extracurricular personnel. And on that, uh, we left someone off we need to add, and that would be a substitute for credit recovery of item A. Would be Holly Brown. We need to add Holly Brown. Now, are you saying we're number eight? Edward G. Atkins is just add that beside of that or something? Yes. Below it? Both what? up are there, but Holly Brown would we would also be higher. Holly Bryant. Yes. Okay. For sub for credit recovery. Okay. Add Holly Bryant below Edward Atkins. Okay. Yes. Uh, out of me, retirements, resignations, and then change in amendments February 21st, 2017 for George Burton, Hart TKA. A kindergarten to April the 28th, 2017, retired. Okay. Uh, and we went through our first posting. Some of those people are reflected on this agenda. Uh, there's some out there that apply to the office and tools are still interviewing. Uh, and we'll be getting another posting out tomorrow. So at the 30th meeting, we, uh, I'll print you out a sheet of where we are, how many field, and, and, and so forth. We are working on a little bit today, and I shared with Brenda and Mr. Mickey if uh, this time last year we had nine positions at the high school at the field. Right now we have zero for next year. <laughs> so, now beyond the, those employees who were on transfer list, right? Now, have some of them are they some of them being reemployed now, or is that yes, past yet? yes, they are. And some of them will be. There's going to be some things happen because people hire at one school, uh, or somebody will 
moved to another position right. probably, and then they then they be four all dispersed, so we'll automatically put them back. Uh, and on the RIF list, there, we only have two people left on the RIF list, so it was not. So it looks like everybody should have a job that we had. Plus, we have a couple more people we think is going to retire. So hopefully, everyone gets a good, uh, you know. And I guess it's safe for me to say what we're considering looking at for next year. Uh, we know with loss of student enrollments, taxes, budget cuts, that next personnel season will be tough. So we're looking right now as positions come available that we think we that we talked about in in uh, when we had our work session. Some of those, if we think we can do without them this year, we're going to go ahead and, and do away with them now. Because it, you know, because there may be a couple positions where we can do that, and, and it'd be much better to do that now than wait till spring and tell somebody they don't have a job. You know, just not You're saying due to the loss and run we are already aware of that's occurred this year and yeah, what might happen yes. next and, year. And we have some teachers that's maybe moving where some positions will come available that we may be able to say. But on the other side of that, we're looking at some overages in elementary that, that you know that we have to look at too. I'm just saying the reason you for see next personnel season Yes, because of loss of student enrollment and the taxes we're losing and not knowing what the budget's going to be and all these cuts. If we can make some cuts now, we'd be much better off than going through that hardship for that teacher or whoever went through the hardship next spring when we can't do it. Well, got to do what you got to do. I'm glad you're all looking forward to it. Thank you. Any questions? Where the, where like the eighth went back in a pool and say, for one, one is going to Midway now, and if somebody over there is coming this direction, are they allowed to switch? No, uh, we'd have to post them. There, there will be some other postings come available. Because uh, that's a really but, long drive. Well, the, the one for Dolores Bartman, for example, uh, we haven't posted it yet because when we had preschool kindergarten registration, we only had 27 students. But now there's up to 34. So that means we'll, before kindergarten, we could have we could have had one class with an aide and another with 10 students and no aide. But now we're over 30, we won't have to have an additional aide. So we're no, we're going to have to post one. So if you post one, then somebody that you've already transferred somewhere else, they can get on. They can be at all. Yes. They can be at home. Yeah. The only uh, thing that changed last year is if you're a current employee, you can only move one time per semester. Okay, and a new employee can't move at all. If you remember, we would have people, bus drivers especially, that would come in and they'd have this route this week, and then the next week they'd have a different route, and the next week they'd have a different route, and the students didn't know who the bus driver was. The bus driver didn't know who the students were, so it, it was. And, you know, we really anticipated a lot of kickback from our service, but, but there was not any questions whatsoever about that. And it, it was a good law that was passed. Really. And you always, and you had the issue with aides and kindergarten kids just get to know that they yeah, are right. and gone. Right. So it was a good law. So, yeah. good, good. Okay. Anybody else? <coughs> If not, then is that an all yes on the personnel items? Okay, we're down to super tennis, but before we do that, let's have comments. Board members, you don't have anything? Uh, I have one thing. Um, we have our recent meeting this coming Thursday, and one of the items on the agenda is the uh, a discussion and kind of get a feel for how counties feel about the co-op as everyone knows, uh, Reese's have been abolished um, after next year, by the point of view. Um, at that time now, at the same time in this law, it's been provided for the development of cooperatives, which would be, well, which could perform many of the same duties that Reese's do. So what the state's really doing is they're getting out of the funding of Reese's, but they would permit counties that wish to to enter into agreements with other counties to do many of the same things, uh, you know, the shared services that we now do, um, uh, 
the uh, cooperative purchasing for one, the legal for is another one that we, for both of those, we use a great deal in RISA too. But that we, uh, our last RISA meeting, uh, Jason Butcher, <coughs> he was there and he was discussing that uh, his, they've been, he's been out throughout the state, I guess he's kind of responsible for that and getting the feel for other counties throughout the state and what they're going to do. It appears that most counties are interested in this format. Now, how it's going to work, no one knows yet. In other words, uh, who would be in a particular cooperative and how that might work? There's a lot of things that are going to come from Charleston that be guidance, give guidance. Now, Mr. Midkiff and I, we discussed this and we kind of talked to some other people in, in Risa too. You know, there are six counties in our Risa. And if we get the general feeling among our discussions with other people is we all would like to remain united with our counties we're with, our six of us. And instead of being Risa too, we'd be co-op too or whatever name they end up giving us. But uh, they are going to kind of want to feel for how our Lincoln County might feel about this on Thursday. So I just wanted to see what your all's thoughts on that are. Uh, Mr. Midkiff and I are both, we think that it's, uh, we really need it because it would, you know, many of the savings that we were able to get and that we could still do a lot of those different things, or those things we're doing now, just in a, under a different name. Um, there may eventually even be uh, some advantages to the co-op system because you'll be talking about, I guess, July of 2018 with the Jeff when it actually took become effective. So that means, and that's what Mrs. Hanlon is dealing with now, along with the other recent directors, is how you're going to transition. How's this going to happen? Because, you know, funding for those things are going to have to come from somewhere. And I know that Jan is already looking at how she can acquire money to, because of all the, you know, the state money they get now, what we think got about $460,000 from our recent two deal. Well, and that pays like certain salaries down there, but much of the other things they do, they generate the grant. But uh, now what she's doing is trying to come up with uh, sources of funding to pay for those administrative costs there. <coughs> but anyway, this whole thing is it's going to you know, evolve and hopefully uh, it'll work out uh, well. And, and it has the potential to have some advantages. The, uh, right now the state, you know, this law has changed over the years, 25 years ago, Reese's were their own entities. Uh, you know, we had a board member and a superintendent were on Risa. They did not answer to the State Department. You Risa too, back in those days when we were on there, some of us. We, you know, we were we had a board of directors, just like we do now. And we uh, if we wanted an executive director, we voted on that person, and that's who got the job. If we wanted an employee, we voted on them, they got the job. But then in the mid-90s there, I think is when it happened, they changed the law to where Reese's went under the State Department of Education. And then, all the, now they were kind of controlling Reese's. And uh, so, just like the last year when we hired a, uh, a director, all we were doing in Reese too was recommending Jan Hanlon. Ultimately, that had to happen in, by, in, in Charleston. But, uh, so, what I'm getting at here is, under this cooperative system, the entrepreneurial part of it, is once again, we would be our own under our own guidance, and the, the State Department really wouldn't be dictating, well, you guys in co-op, whatever you are, uh, you're going to, you, know, you do this and you can't do that, we're going to pick who you get to employ, that that would not be an issue anymore. Uh, some of the activities that go on there, that co-op would decide what activities they wanted to be involved in. So there, there's probably uh, you know, some pluses here, but the transition would be what's important. But, According to Mrs. Hanlon, what she said, if you remember the governor's original bill, it had all the dominoes, it had all kinds of things in there, but one of which was just to abolish reasons. But as, as you all know, we sent letters and others did too, and people lobbied and whatever else up there. And she feels like that that got the governor's attention, that we were showing how we were saving money, not just us, but throughout the state through Reese's, and to just totally abolish it without some method of coming up to addressing some of these things wasn't going to be a good thing. So that's where they apparently came up with this idea of the allowing co op the state allowing counties to share among one another and eventually they get this name of the cooperative name. So um, 
I think on what we did there, she feels like had an impact because they have uh, altered the law to where counties could share like this would be doing. But anyway, on Thursday, you know, we're going to, if you don't have any thoughts one way or the other, you let me and Jeff know and we'll share that when, we, uh, when our time comes to speak on Thursday at that recent meeting. Mr. Priestley, I don't think we have much choice but to do this. What kind are we going to handle our legal uh, matters? Computers? Dog rides. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, I don't think we have much choice. Well, I mean, I appreciate it. I agree with you 100%. Once again, uh, it saved us a lot of money. And, you know, just how much easier things have flown. You know, we, they just, uh, a lot of things that we do that we just take, take it for granted that it goes through research. And, uh, you know, if we're able to still can do good, they say it would be great. Anything else, Jeff, about that? No, I, I'm looking forward to the meeting, actually, Thursday. It appears on the agenda that we may come back and meet again on June the 14th and maybe at that time officially act, have, have a, an action item on there to, uh, to approve. At a reason. Yeah, yeah. At, at another There's so many so questions. So. The last time we met, because I asked questions, uh, is, well, you know, how does Lincoln County decide that it wants to be a part of this? Uh, and of course, Jason Butcher, he, a lot of these things he doesn't know either. I said, you know, does, do we have to have on our board agenda at some point that we, that we vote that we want to be in this co-op, you know, with whoever it might be? Well, they can't really answer that, you see. So I said, or, you know, is, can I, the superintendent and I just say, yeah, we want to be in without input from the other board members. I said, in our county, my gut feeling is that'd be okay, but I'm not sure it would be all over the whole state, you know, but once again, they're learning through this process too. But I agree with you there. There's so many things that we do. The cooperative purchasing, people just take for granted the amount of money that we save there. Uh, if it wasn't there, you know, along with the obvious thing of legal, but you know, then we've got others that we're going to deal with. And uh, we just have to see what happens. But uh, at this point, without us actually formally voting, because as Jeff said, Want to come up, but our, they're having a special meeting in June for this very reason. It seems uh, mm -hmm. so. We'll, but on Thursday, we'll kind of give them that it's our thought now that uh, you know we're leaning, certainly leaning strongly in that direction. And I think Mr. Ellis should start looking in the budget for about eighty thousand dollars to pay our contribution. You, you said what the Allen Reese got four hundred sixty-four and eighty thousand dollars a year, so. Our, our six counties are going to have to come up with well maybe once again that's, that's an option that may not be like that, that's the last them. resort what Jan is trying to do she told me the other day that she you know she feels in her position that she should be able to come up with the money to run that operation down there and uh, I have a lot of confidence in it um, but uh, you know we would still have like our you know we pay <coughs> for legal and those different yeah. services we kick in our money but she's uh, <coughs> very optimistic that given a year that she can acquire the money to operate that place but if not like we talked about before you know if it meant that we had to kick in fifty thousand dollars a membership fee. yeah and from six counties there's three hundred thousand dollars because she said that would be they to keep five employees that they just absolutely have to have uh, that you know, we'd be we'd still save us two hundred thousand dollars probably. Oh, not him. But it may be that we that won't even happen. She may be able to come up with that, and uh, you know, we'll just go on as usual with the funding coming not from the state but from somewhere else, and that's just paying for the services that we share. But we'll keep you posted. Won't we? Okay. Okay. All right. Did you have any comments? Yeah, just a, a couple here. Uh, one, uh, really just an announcement uh, that Special Olympics is going to be this Thursday. Parade at 9, I feel, actually. Yeah. Uh, last week it was scheduled, regularly scheduled. We had all that rain, so this is the makeup day. It uh, looks like the weather's going to be uh, wonderful on Thursday, so it uh, should, should be a great day. I just wanted you to be aware that that activity is happening. Um, Sent you an email yesterday. I think Sean even showed up yesterday. Maybe took a picture too. I may have just missed you at the, at the football field at the high that? school. Uh, but the, the fence is up. Uh, I, I drove around the building today. I didn't see that we had any equipment on site over there. But it's it's that work is about to begin. Uh, well, we're all excited uh, to finally see some uh, 
dirt being moved around over there and get our football field and track in place. I, I had a conversation yesterday with our high school track coach, Mr. Uh, Watts, and a uh, very passionate man about what he's doing with track. And uh, he, uh, he, along with his, uh, his daughter, Misha Ross, who's the middle school track coach at Guy Valley, uh, came to me and shared with me that there's an opportunity uh, to buy a pole vault pit uh, from a used one that's like three or four years old from Winfield High School. That it, that they're getting ready to, to get a brand new one. And this piece of equipment would cost about $15,000 brand new if they put their buy it or sell. Or, you know, um, but anyway, uh, they're willing to sell it uh, to us for $5,000. Completely portable. It's something that uh, can be moved from one location to another. Uh, it, uh, we'd have, it it comes in sections or pieces of way Mr. Watts described it to, you. and it can be stored somewhere during the off season. You know, just in a metal building or something of that nature. He said that wouldn't be able like, to find a place to store it. We can come up with the money to make the purchase. So I got with Ray yesterday. And we've got a little money, enough there that we could use to make this purchase. I mean, it's just, you know, according to Mission Bob, this is a, a once-in-a-lifetime kind of opportunity to get this uh, equipment. We've got a young man that's a pole vaulter for the first time this year who is qualified for the state meeting. He's, he's really good. And, um, but, and then we had some other kids. Uh, that Mr. Watts was sharing with me. It's also qualified for the track, state track meet later this weekend. Anyway, he's just really excited about what, about the track program, about growing it, about the work that's about to begin over there at the high school. And uh, I just think it'd be good if we could uh, if we could make this uh, purchase, make this happen for uh, for those kids. And I just yeah, wanted to share. I think they'll all come and get that cheap. Yeah. Take advantage of it. I, I, I agree with what they said, especially the next cost, because um, hopefully by next spring we'll be able to get some things out there. And I, I try to think what you know, the lines and all, I guess they could paint those around, those around the field, and the sprinting areas, they could paint those out. And, it's a pretty dry weather. Not a lot of improvisation you can do there to make that really work. Get a longer pole. Yeah. A high jump or a pole ball or anything around it. I'm built. I have a low center of gravity to stay close to the ground. And Mr. Snyder, he's indicated that he'll, he'll have a new round of student activities money you know, beginning July 1. And after that, he's talked to the track coaches and he's going to help buy some. Uh, some equipment as well, hurdles and things of that nature that they're going to need. But they've, great, they've got big planes, and um, I, I think this time next spring that uh, we'll, we'll see them over there making use of that. So that feels good. I'll watch us there, we will. Yeah. Yeah, he is, now I know I had a daughter that, that Mitchell was the coach, but Bob assisted, and the things Bob taught the kids that year, this is not this year, but the year before, the things he taught them were things probably none of our students in the track and field area have ever known. The science behind how you run, how you run fast, and techniques, not just run harder, run more. And I'm not, not knocking anybody that's ever been in that position before, but the things I heard Bob teaching me, wow, I yeah, never heard that. Ahead. That's what I told him. No, not hard enough. Look at that. Come on, there, man. We'll move it. Okay. What else, Jim? Uh, so, uh, Leslie Tyree I was here a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago. She talked about our employment of personnel for extracurricular activities. She's taken your, some of your comments, suggestions. She's made some revisions to the policy. She's asked me to give you a copy tonight and then provide me any feedback that you have within the next week. And then she would take any of those. Um, suggestions that you may have, put that in the policy, include a policy for the uh, May 30th board meeting, where the board would officially uh, vote to approve the policy, put it out on public review for 30 days. So I'm going to provide you with the, 
the hard copy. And the first page is the page that contains the revisions and suggestions that were made. That second page pertains to coaches being hired for the extra critical positions, and that language will stay the same. Conversations with the administration at the high school for us to consider a one hour early dismissal on the day of graduation. And the rationale being uh, because of the congestion of those buses coming back in here at the time after they've dropped off kids, students, that it causes some of the issues that we have with people trying to get into the, uh, to the ball field. What they want to be able to do is start running those shuttles from the high school early. Graduation will be at 7 p.m., which, if I'm not mistaken, is about it's 30 minutes later than it was this past year. Um, so if we dismiss countywide an hour early, that would give the, the bus operators, especially in this area, an opportunity to, to get those kids home and then back out here on the lot and, and help prevent some of the traffic issues issues we had out there, as well as to start the process of shuttling parents, grandparents, family members over from the high school over to the uh, field. Would that be a county-wide? We would have to do it just because of how everything's tied into the high school. That would be a one-hour early dismissal on uh, May 26th. <coughs> okay? So that's official? Sounds official, official. to me. It's fine. We'll, make, we'll make an announcement tomorrow. It's fine. We'll get that out. Pick him. You're not going to be Sean. He'll have it. Well. <laughs> He'll be on there tonight. Well. I don't know how you do it. Okay, that is it. That's all. All right. Board members, don't have anything else. Let's move uh, then to our last item, which is the superintendent's evaluation uh, documentation presentation. But in order to do that, we need to go into executive session. Could I have a motion then to go into executive session? So moved. And Zary and Rowdy. Seven one six two. 